Welcome to Case File, the YouTube channel dedicated to thrilling and mysterious detective stories. Today, we take you to one of the most chilling cases in Chinese history, the ostrich meat case of Yunnan. This case is not just a series of enigmatic disappearances, but also a clash between unimaginable brutality and the determination of those seeking justice. Join Case File as we delve deeper into the darkness behind the people and the truth hidden in the mists of the law. The ostrich meat case of Yunnan began with a series of untraceable disappearances in a small village in Yunnan, China. From these mysterious vanishings, a series of shocking discoveries gradually unfolded, opening a new chapter in the country's criminal history. Behind the disappearances was the cold-blooded brutality of a murderer beyond comprehension. If you want to learn more about the harrowing developments and the conclusion of this case, don't forget to follow and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any new episodes from Case File. Join us as we venture deep into the heart of darkness, where the truth always awaits its unveiling. Morning of April 26, 2012, at the Jincheng Bus Station, Yunnan Province. The bus station buzzes with activity from early morning. The bustling crowd, the blend of shouts and car horns, create a characteristic symphony of the town. Xing Lingyan, a middle-aged woman, steps out of the train station, her eyes scanning the crowd anxiously. In her haste, she catches a glimpse of a small, elderly man, about 50 years old, sitting by the roadside selling ostrich meat. He sits in front of a wooden chopping board, laden with fresh cuts of ostrich meat. Around him, several people are haggling over the price. Xing Lingyan only manages a quick glance before continuing on her urgent journey. Xing Lingyan heads to the Jinning County in a state of deep anxiety. Her son, Han Yao, 19 years old, has been missing since the previous night. She received a call from his internship company, where Han Yao was training, informing her that he hadn't shown up for work and had been out of contact all day. Knowing that her son, about to graduate from the Business Management Institute of Yunnan, is always sensible and stable, Jing Lingyan can't help but worry. She feels certain that something is terribly wrong with Han Yao. Han Yao is an intern at a technical exploration company in Kunming. His first internship project happens to be in the automotive parts city of Jincheng, not far from his dormitory. Every day, a shuttle bus transports the workers and Han Yao usually boards at 8.30 a.m. On April 25th, after arriving at the work site, his manager asked him to return to the dormitory to collect some work materials. The walk from the dormitory to the work site only takes about 20 minutes, but by 10 a.m., Han Yao still hadn't returned. His colleagues tried calling him but couldn't get through. They split up to search nearby but couldn't find any trace of Han Yao. It wasn't until after 10 p.m. that Han Yao's colleague called Mrs. Jing Lingyan to ask if he had come home. Only then did she learn that her son was missing. This news only heightened her anxiety and despair. Jing Lingyan decided she could wait no longer and set out to search for her son herself. After receiving a call the previous night from Han Yao's colleague, reporting his absence from work and disappearance, Jing Lingyan felt uneasy. She knew her son, who was about to graduate from Yunnan Business Management Institute, was always sensible and stable. This raised her concerns that something serious had happened to Han Yao. Amidst her worries, Jing Lingyan decided to visit the Jincheng police station to report her son's disappearance. There, she met with police chief Zhao Huiyun. Although he listened, Chief Yun reacted calmly suggesting that Han Yao might have just gone out with friends and would soon return. Jing Lingyan, with tears welling up in a choked voice, pleaded for police assistance but received no necessary support. Chief Yun, smiling, analyzed the situation. Firstly, your son has just graduated and doesn't possess anything valuable. Secondly, he is well behaved and has no enemies. Thirdly, at 19, he might have just gone out with his girlfriend. Such disappearances are common, and he will probably return in a few days. However, a mother's worry remained undiminished. Jing Lingyan, almost crying, implored, My son has always been sensible. He wouldn't just wander off or go out without informing us. 
However, Chief Yun remained unyielding and advised her to mobilize relatives and friends to search for Han Yao. Dismissing her concerns, he turned his back and walked into his office, ignoring Jing Lingyan's distress. Another police officer also tried to persuade her to return home and seek help from acquaintances. Realizing she couldn't file a report that day, Jing Lingyan left the police station deeply disappointed, deciding to take matters into her own hands to find her son. After leaving the police station without any assistance, Jing Lingyan determinedly decided to search for her son, Han Yao, on her own. She contacted friends and family, and together they organized a search throughout Jincheng. They combed through streets and alleys but found no trace of Han Yao. The next day, April 27th, during the search, Jing Lingyan and her supporters met a helpful local. This person suggested that Han Yao might have been abducted to work as a laborer in a black brick kiln. This information sparked new hope in Jing Lingyan's heart, along with deep concern for her son's safety. During her search, Jing Lingyan and her sister-in-law Han Lin encountered Lei Wu Sheng, a 24-year-old young man who had escaped from a black brick kiln. He recounted being deceived and forced into hard labor under harsh conditions. Hearing this, Jing Lingyan feared that her son, Han Yao, might also be held captive in a similar place. After leaving Lei Wuxing's house, Jing Lingyan decided to return to the Jincheng police station immediately. This time, the police reluctantly filed a report on the case. Jing Lingyan shed tears when the police stated they needed time to process the case and she had to wait. The police, with a stern face, waved her off, promising to notify her if there was any news. Standing outside the police station, looking back at the imposing building, Jing Lingyan realized she could not depend on the police. She decided to search for her son herself, understanding the difficulty and danger of this journey. With a mother's determination and love, she bravely embarked on the search, undeterred by tears or exhaustion. Jing Lingyan and Han Lin, seemingly fragile on the outside but resolute within, decided to rent two motorcycles. With enthusiastic help from locals, they began a daring search, sneaking into black brick kills where they suspected Han Yao might be held captive. Their search was fraught with danger. Each black brick kiln was heavily guarded by fierce dogs and thugs, who allowed no strangers near. Every time Jing Ling Yan and Han Lin approached a kiln, they were chased away, sometimes even facing aggressive dogs. In one instance, their motorcycle skidded on a wet road, and Jing Ling Yan was thrown several meters away. Despite being injured, she quickly got up, tears streaming down her face, her eyes red and swollen with pain and worry, wondering where her son might be. After days of searching nearly all the black brick kills in the vicinity without finding any trace of Han Yao, an unusual piece of information emerged from Nan Men, close to where Han Yao disappeared. Children from several families in this area had mysteriously vanished over recent years. During her search, Jing Lingyan uncovered a pattern of mysterious disappearances occurring in Nanmen, near where Han Yao went missing. These disappearances shared concerning similarities. Li Han Xiong, 12, vanished around 9 a.m. on May 1st, 2007, while returning home from a field. His family's extensive search efforts yielded no results. Xia Hai Jun, 16, disappeared after school on January 27, 2011, when he returned to pick up his report card. His family also searched for years to no avail. Chen Tao, 16, went missing on the morning of September 30, 2011, while heading to Dai Thatch Kyo at the South Gate for some work. Guy In Wei, 17, vanished near the Tan Van Cold Storage on the morning of February 19, 2012. Three of these teens, including Han Yao, disappeared within the last two years. This unusual pattern of disappearances within a few hundred meters in Nanmen caught Xin Lingyan's attention, raising suspicions of a hidden connection. After meeting and gathering information from the families of other missing victims, Xing Lingyan was determined to seek police assistance again. 
She hoped the recorded evidence she had collected would compel the police to act. Arriving at the Jincheng police station around 9.30 p.m., Xing Lingyan and relatives of other victims waited hours without being attended to. Exhaustion and frustration mounted after days of relentless searching. Han Lin, Xing Lingyan's sister-in-law, discovered the harsh reality when she sneaked up to the third floor under the pretense of using the restroom. There, she heard laughter and conversation from the meeting room, witnessing indifference and unprofessionalism from the police officers, including director Zhao Huiyun. Unable to contain her anger, Han Lin burst into the meeting room and confronted the responsible officers directly. Her outrage drew the attention of other victims' families, leading to a physical altercation. The tension quickly escalated but was eventually resolved when other police officers intervened. After the altercation, Xing Lingyan presented detailed evidence about the ongoing disappearances in Nanmen. She hoped this clear evidence would spur the police into serious investigation. However, Director Zhao Huiyun once again dismissed all information, treating it merely as local rumors and disturbances. Zhao Huiyun's dismissive attitude and refusal to acknowledge the severity of the situation left Xing Lingyan and the other families deeply disappointed and angry. They left the police station, realizing they could not rely on law enforcement for help. Xing Lingyan and Han Lin, along with other family members, recognized that their steadfast search for the truth about the mysterious disappearances in Jincheng was not only unsupported by the police but also faced obstacles and disdain from them. In a state of anger and helplessness, Han Lin proposed a new plan. We need to make noise about this. If the police won't help, we'll seek the media's attention. We have to let everyone know what's happening here. This idea quickly gained support from Jing Lingyan and the other families. They decided to harness the power of the media to expose the truth about the mysterious disappearances, hoping that public pressure would compel the police to conduct a thorough investigation. Jing Lingyan, determined to find her son Han Yao and other missing children, approached and persuaded other affected families to join forces and bring the issue to public light. Initially, these families, exhausted and disheartened after years of fruitless searching, were hesitant. Li Yudong, father of Li Han Xiong, one of the missing children, expressed his fatigue and despair. We have tried everything, but now we just want peace. However, Jing Lingyan did not give up. She shared her pain and loss, her sleepless nights, and the aging caused by worry. When she showed the dog bite scars on her leg, her tears touched the hearts of other parents. She said, These children are our flesh and blood. We can't let them vanish without doing anything. Xing Lingyan's story awakened the emotions and will of other families. They decided to unite not only to search for their children, but also to expose this painful truth to the public. They went to a photo shop, printed numerous missing person flyers, and distributed them everywhere. They also opened a Weibo account and contacted numerous media outlets, including newspapers and television stations, to share their stories. Thanks to these tireless efforts, the missing children's issue started gaining public attention. Xing Lingyan and the other families' fight to uncover the truth and seek justice was no longer a solitary journey but became a powerful movement, attracting national interest. After widespread media coverage of the missing cases, national public attention focused on Jincheng. The Yunnan Daily Information, the first newspaper to report on the mass disappearances, created a strong wave of public interest. This attention prompted the Ministry of Public Security to respond. On the evening of May 3rd, Jing Lingyan received notice that a special task force from the Kunming Public Security had arrived in town and requested her information. In tears and mixed emotions, she felt relieved that someone finally listened and cared about her pain. At the police station, Jing Lingyan met Chen Wei, the deputy head of the Kunming Crime Investigation Team. Chen Wei, serious and decisive, quickly reviewed the case files and directed investigative activities. He expressed anger at the local police's negligence and was determined to uncover the truth. 
Upon seeing Jingling Yan, Chen Wei immediately recognized the strong woman from the TV report, with her short, tousled blonde hair and red, determined eyes. He listened to her and the other families, committing to a thorough investigation to uncover the truth about the mysterious disappearances. This meeting was not only an opportunity for Jingling Yan and other families to present their stories but also marked a critical turning point in the investigation, opening new hope for the missing individuals and their families. Chen Wei, deputy head of the special task force from the Kunming Public Security, demonstrated deep concern and strong determination in the meeting with Xingling Yan and families of the other missing individuals. He opened the meeting with a commitment that his team would handle the case seriously and strive to uncover the truth. In the meeting, Chen Wei and the members of the special task force questioned Xingling Yan and others about details related to the missing person's cases. He listened attentively and understood the circumstances of everyone involved. Chen Wei expressed his anger towards the negligence of the local police and asserted that he would not let this indifference hinder the investigation. After the meeting, Chen Wei reassured everyone that he would assist them in searching for their relatives and ensure that the case would be resolved quickly and effectively. He pledged to provide a clear explanation of the events and promised not to let anything impede his work. Upon escorting Jingling Yan and the other families home, Chen Wei immediately set to work, organizing a task force to quickly gather and analyze clues related to the series of disappearances. The task force began working tirelessly to find traces and information, opening a new phase in the investigation filled with hope and determination. Thus, we conclude the first part of this intriguing and mysterious tale. Key questions still loom, where are the missing children hiding? What secrets lie behind this series of enigmatic events? And who is responsible for these heartbreaking losses? All these mysteries will gradually unfold in Part 2, The Truth Behind the Yunnan Ostrich Meat Case. Stay tuned as we piece together the clues and reveal the underlying truth of this enthralling story.